Hi, and welcome to What's New in Jenkins LTS. Today we're talking about 2.387.2. And along with me, as always, we have Mark Waite back. Mark, how are you doing? Just great, Darren. How are you? Good. Now, for those of you that are joining us live right at the beginning, you noticed there was no countdown. Uh, no Bluetooth connection. No Bluetooth connection. So I didn't have the time to get that done today. So just in case you love listening to the silent countdown, I'm sorry listening to the silent countdown watching the silent countdown right dead rodents dead rodents are a problem dead dead keyboards are a problem ouch i should know by streaming i shouldn't be using wireless anything hey come on come on That's... there's bluetooth's a pretty narrow protocol yeah but it was narrow enough today to where it didn't work okay right that's not what we're here to talk about today new version of lts jenkins lts came out yesterday 2387.2 and surprisingly, there was not a lot going on. Or unsurprisingly, there was not a lot going on. Yeah, okay. I would I would phrase it differently, Darren. So I'm going to phrase it. This is sort of an intensely personal one for Mark Waite because there was an awful lot going on that we can summarize in a very few simple phrases. And so it's there's an awful lot of work hiding behind the things we're going to summarize here and the work involved me personally. So I'm, I'm deeply invested in it, but we'll, you're we'll right. Go it's there. pretty easy to summarize. It's easy. So this is one of those cases to where, unlike the, the old adage, sorry, I didn't have time to make this short for you. Uh, we had lots of time to make this short. Right. And that's, exactly. that's what we'll talk about. And, anyway. and the energy expended was worth it. And, and I think it's a good thing for people to know that these kind of things happen and be aware. Yep. So just in case people haven't joined us before, because there are people that show up, uh, by the way, welcome for being here with us. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about what is Jenkins LTS. Right. So the Jenkins long-term support release is begins with a Jenkins weekly that is selected for its relative stability and health. We choose that Jenkins weekly release and then base backports onto it across a series of three or four weeks releasing dot one. So 2.387 weekly was selected. We then backported some things to it so it became dot one. Four weeks later we release additional backports, additional fixes that may be needed for 2.387.2. Four weeks after that, we do it, that again, releasing 2.387.3. And that ends the cycle of a typical Jenkins long-term support release. Initial release, four weeks later, a dot two. Four weeks later that after that, a dot three. Now, sometimes we add an additional release in there. For instance, if we need to do a security fix in a particular place, we may end up with a dot four. And on occasion, when, for instance, I made mistakes, we ended up with a dot five. You don't make mistakes, Mark. <laughs> no, never, never. Never, never. never make mistakes. Okay. So let's get into the notes this, for this release. Uh, yes, your eyes do not deceive you. There are only three, count them three, items. Right. I can't it's, remember a recent LTS to where there were this few items. It is very few. And that's a good thing, right? We like that. That's it's it really the word stable means something. And in this case, stable is a good thing. Now, just in case you haven't looked at the legend, which is at the top, you'll notice that all of these are red, which means they were bugs in some shape or form, right? Bigger means major. A couple those are uh, how do we classify it? just a bug? We don't classify it as minor. It's just either it's a bug or a major bug. Correct. Right. Okay. So the big one it's, that stood out here was adjusting the WebSocket idle to 60 seconds by default. Well, and, and it's, this, is, this is not as well phrased, I think, as it probably justified. Yeah. Its default has been adjusted, and it is now adjustable. So, ah. so it's not just that we've adjusted the default, but you can, if you have additional conditions or other places, you can set the WebSocket timeout that you need for your installation. And WebSocket's a really elegant thing because it lets me connect agents over the HTTP protocol instead of using a dedicated port with the, the, the other protocols. So it lets me do 
connect agents and open only a single port for my HTTP communication that my web browsers use, I also now use it for agents. Network latencies is what I automatically think about. I mean, you would hope that you can get a connection in 60 seconds. Yeah, and and that's that's it's a it's a brave and bold world, right? I'm not sure what the challenges are that cause one environment or another, but certainly Kubernetes environments and other sort of interesting novel networking environments may be very busy spinning up or reconfiguring themselves and as such may get in the way of getting a connection promptly. And what was the default prior to this? Do you, remember? you know, I don't know. I would assume it was a, a it was five less or than ten 60. second, but I yeah, do not know. It was know. short. Yeah. yeah. So now 60 by default, but more importantly, if you need to adjust it, you can do it with, if I remember right, a dash D is, right. is the new it's, one. I believe yeah. it's a property, yeah. Okay. All right. So that was the big one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just a couple of other, I'll go to the bottom one first, updated some bundled plugins uh, to match up with security advisories, no big deal. And whoops, we broke a redirect at some point in time. <laughs> Well, and, and actually on that security one, we're really grateful to the security team. They do such a good job of caring about security. And in this case, when a pl plugin is bundled inside Jenkins, the user by default will get that version. Now, the newer versions are offered to them immediately through the Update Center. But when we've already fixed a security issue, it's good that the security team proposes that the bundled plugin be updated so that the user doesn't have to go through the process of then upgrading plugins immediately after doing the install. So let's name off one of those plugins, because this is interesting because from a Cloud Beast CI perspective, which mm -hmm. if you're interested, obviously we're sitting on Cloud Beast TV, uh, during an initial installation, all the plugins are there that are considered to be install suggested plugins, right? And those are just there. But right. with Jenkins, that's a little bit different, right? Because they're, that the full set that you get on install suggested plugins isn't in there. All you, all you have to do is install and just wait for things to download. You'll quickly understand that. But what are like one of those that is always yeah, bundled? So we definitely, let's open up the advisory because I don't remember okay. a specific, but let's take a look at it. Open right. one of those advisories and let's see them. You and I can probably t call them out pretty quickly. So mm, a bundled prob plugin likely? Not probably not from this one, but I bet okay. from this one, well, it had to have been. So I'm guessing email extension would probably be one. Maybe, yeah. JUnit is, because that's Likely. an install suggested. Right. Uh, build step. Okay, uh, pipe, yeah, pipeline build step is definitely Maybe. not bundled. We don't bundle. Well, that's right. We don't pipe, bundle pipeline. We don't bundle any pipeline with Jenkins yet. But but it's, the, the set is there, and, oh. and the update. Script security. That one's bundled. Could be, right? <laughs> I yep. think it is. So anyway. Having things bundled is nice, but again, like you were saying, when if you were to do a fresh installation, even if it had the old one bundled, as soon as it comes up, it's going to say, hey, there's a new one for you. Well, and it's, it's not only going to say, hey, there's a new one for you. It's going to say, hey, there's a new one for you, and the one you currently have has a security vulnerability. Right. And those are, those are both good things, but they're also annoying to do users for their first-time experience, so we want to get rid of them. Yep. So this is sort of the, um, what am I looking for here? This is sort of a, uh, it's not chicken and egg. Um, First time user experience. First time user experience. Yeah, yeah. we just make, make that better. Right. Because, it, and the reason why it's not, it's important, but it's not mm, oh, critically important, I guess I should say. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Uh, no, go ahead. No, so that, that next one, okay, the next one I admit is a mark weight thing. We had a, a user report the middle one, restore the redirect destination. Oh, yes. They reported to us, hey, I was using this API call, and with Jenkins version, some older version, it worked just fine. And with right. the current version, it doesn't work. And I couldn't duplicate the problem. I was fascinated why they could see it. It's just an API call. Well, it turns out they were checking for the redirect, and the redirect was going to the wrong page on the return. And I was not checking for the redirect because I thought, why would I care what redirected page comes back from an API call? So this one was an interesting story thanks to the users who submitted it, thanks to the people who put up with it, 
coming into the Jenkins LTS. Most users will not use this API. Most users will not be affected by that bug. Okay. Now let's go to the, thankfully we had enough long time to make this short. Right. So what is this? So it's that top banner, a new GPG signing key, and there's one other piece hiding here. We didn't even bother to announce it because users wouldn't recognize it. It's actually two different things related to signing. First is the Debian and the Red Hat packages. Both have switched from using an older GPG signing key to a new one. The, the, C, the signing key we were, were using has expired. And that's intentional. We don't want signing keys to last forever, so we expired it. It expired 30th of March, 2023. We created a new key, signed it, and published the instructions on a blog post, on yep. various Twitter, LinkedIn, etc., all sorts of channels. The Jenkins yep. user list, the community site, all sorts of places alerting. However, we didn't do it soon enough. And because we didn't do it soon enough, we left users of the Jenkins long-term support release who needed to install between March 30th and April 5 that they couldn't mm -hmm. install on Debian without getting this horrifying warning that the package is not signed. Mm -hmm. And in the Debian world, everyone expects their packages to be signed. So, so we apologize. We won't make that mistake again. We've got lots of good insights from people out in the community suggesting, hey, consider this or consider this or here, here are these additional guidelines from the Debian people who say, if you do this, it's a better experience. So we'll, we'll do a retrospective. We'll figure out what we should do going forward. So the next time we rotate these keys in 2026, it won't be as nearly as big a challenge. We're already talking about 2026. Yeah, wow. keys. these keys will expire in three years. So that that's sort of, that one was angst ridden for me because of, well, because of having to answer awkward questions about why yeah. can't I install Debian LTS during this period from March 30th to April 5? And the answer is because we didn't do this soon enough. Yep. And if you go out to the Debian documentation, gives you a big warning up top. Right. Good. Right. And then all you have to do is just make sure you grab the latest. Right. So just you, execute execute these instructions, that top block that does the curl. Yep. Execute that one and then execute the next one. And then you're you're back to how to things should normal. be normal. Yep. Right. Okay. And we can see that it's mark just go ahead and mark your calendar. It's March twenty sixth, not March thirty first, just in case. Right, and and certainly you can trust that we will rotate that key before March March twenty sixth of twenty twenty six. Okay. Let's actually go one more place. Okay. That's associated with this. It's actually in the upgrade guide. Oh because, right, yeah. Because there was a related up upgrade guide entry for this. Mm -hmm. So again, even though it was in a blog post, it was on social media, it was on fill in the blank people probably still don't know about it. Well, well, and, and it's back to the same thing that the upgrade guide, we want the upgrade guide to be enough to get them started without having to follow us on social media, without having to read the blog posts. The upgrade guide is where Jenkins administrators should go as they're considering an upgrade. Read the upgrade, please. Read the upgrade guide, please. Okay, is there anything else we need to go over? I think that covers one Everything more for this one, one more? more one more oh. and this is not even mentioned but mm. i i have to i have to flag it because it was great help from the infra team the jenkins windows installer signing also expired march 30th 2023 and therefore the msi package would have been unsigned had we not refreshed that Thanks to the work of the Continuous Delivery Foundation and oddly enough, some attorneys from the Continuous Delivery Foundation who had to help us get all the right parts and pieces assembled, uh, we got a new signing certificate and the Windows installer, the MSI package, is again signed. Now, will Windows users detect any difference? Nope, because so long as it's signed, Windows will allow them to install it and not give ugly, horrible messages. 
So you're saying lawyers were actually helpful and useful? They, they, were, they were vital to this, not just helpful and useful. They were absolutely critical because DigiCert correctly says you must have a clear chain of trust from point A to point B, and they wanted a legal description, legal, legally valid document that said Do, we are attached to CDF, which is attached to Linux Foundation. And we're very grateful that the attorneys did exactly what they did. Who would have known? It took a lawyer to get Jenkins deployed. Right. There's, there's, there feels like a blog post somewhere in there. Well, there well, and there has to be. And, and, and certainly, but I'm not sure that I'm not sure that the attorneys they want, want to be that visible. It. They may exactly. say, you know what? That's just what we do. Of course, that's how we do it. But it, it's I'm very grateful for their help. Very, very grateful. And and it wouldn't have been successful without them. So thanks to the, the team at CDF that helped. Good. OK, so now is that it? That's it. That's it. OK, so we'll be back in four weeks. Uh, we are, at least as we're doing this live, day before Good Friday, Easter Monday, whatever holidays you're taking. If, if you're taking holidays, great. If not, mm -hmm. hang out with your friends this weekend. Don't be installing Jenkins this weekend. Take a weekend off, uh, unless you really need to, and then, yeah, go do it. Uh, this is also one of those times to where companies like to like, oh, right, great, it's a great long weekend. Why don't you guys go take care of upgrades this weekend? <laughs> Think about it, people. Think about it. Okay. So we're back in four weeks. Uh, is there anything big between now and then that we no. need to be aware of? No. Well, the next big big thing comes shortly after our next session. CDCon is May eighth and 9th in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and I'll be there. And so, if you're at CDCon, please come say hi. Do you gonna have a Jenkins booth there? I no, 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 not no. A booth. Just I'll do some demos. I've got some okay. demos, and I'm giving a talk. But but the talk is actually more on test automation and testing than it is specifically on Jenkins. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, everybody, for being here with us live today. Uh, if you're watching the replay or either case, uh, give us a thumbs up before you leave. We'd appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you again in four weeks. Thanks, everybody. And if I can get everything right, since I didn't have the countdown to begin with, I can at least give you a nice little outro now. <laughs>